Hello everyone, I'm back from hiatus with another post-commentary game. And let's see what we got going on here. Nothing too amazing in the tray. Eastern Phoebe is looking pretty good. Ecologist and Platform Builder is probably going to be Ecologist here. Although Red Shouldered Hawk could pair pretty well with the Eastern Phoebe. That Golden Eagle looks like a good bomb, but pretty expensive to start out. Hawk could be a good forest bird here. The Phoebe could go well in any habitat. Taking a bit of a non-standard food spread. Grabbing that rat for the hawk. Hooded warbler. Good bomb. Looks like I'm thinking about that pretty hard. It's been a while since I played this game, so I don't really remember everything about it. I'm considering keeping that warbler. Although platform builder would be pretty good here with the Phoebe and the hawk. But it looks like I stick with Ecologist. It's a pretty good bonus card. Usually easy to pick up four points minimum off that. When my opponent took a long time figuring out their starting hand here. That usually means they uh, are in a weak position. Looks like they only kept one card and a bunch of food. So they must have kept a wetland bird here and they're just going to start digging off the deck and praying for something good. Gonna drop that hawk in the forest. We have some flexibility with the Phoebe here at this position. They drew a card off the top of the deck so that's kind of signaling a, a bad position for them. Phoebe could be leveraged into the wetlands here to gain some food while drawing cards or the grasslands for food and eggs. That's always effective. Looks so like I'm going with the wetlands Phoebe here. That makes sense. My opponent is in kind of a strange position. I'm kind of gauging whether I want to hand out worms to them in this position. They have plenty of food right now, so they really could do anything. And they drew another card. They took the Brant there. So that's interesting. So they might kind of want to keep that in their back pocket for maybe round two. So they could drop that on turn nine since they'd be going first in the round and have access to that fresh tray. I lay eggs here. And we're in the lead for the round goal with brown powers, but my opponent is still in a position to do anything at this point. Brown pelican flipped up after the brant draw, not really a good card for either of us, but really right now I'm in the stronger position here. And of course, they could have a raven or a killdeer in hand, uh, given the rat and the wheat and the worm here. Um, they don't have a fish, so I'm not thinking about something like Franklin's Gull or White Stork. So they played the Brant here and revealed Purple Martin, so I'm grabbing that. That's one of the best cards in the game. And I am going to spend the egg for the extra card here, I believe. I'm weighing that option. <laughs> Looks like I thought about it pretty hard. I did go for it there. And I am going to hand out the worm. Revealing Cassin's Finch. So my opponent picked up the Golden Eagle and another bird I can't remember. It wasn't too... Oh, the Sandhill Crane. That's what it was. So they're, those cards are expensive. And the crane requires a lot of wheat. So going to be it's going to take them a while to get up and running they don't really have any strong food production at the moment either so that's kind of like okay is there a raven in their hand to combo with that sandhill crane they just picked up and we're going to build out our wetlands even further here with the purple martin so now we have three birds with brown powers we have a really good card drawing base 
in our wetlands. And this Mississippi kite could be good for... Uh, we're in the lead with the wrong goal here, but it, it's another brown power. Could be another bird with a tucked card. Uh, it could be our grassland bird for ecologist. And there we see common chiff chaff and white throated dipper off the top of the deck. So now it's like, okay, this suddenly became a chiff chaff engine or a chiff chaff game. I have a set, not looking too great. And I am going to take the worm here. Now it's all about getting this chiff chaff and this dipper down as fast as I can. And just like that, this game immediately turned into something that I wasn't expecting. That top deck can really be a kingmaker in a lot of situations. So my opponent has a Brewer's Blackbird down for another brown power. I am going to chuck the Avocet here for some extra food. Petrol gets tucked, so now we have the Fish and the Worm for the Dipper. And it looks like we're going to do really well on the round goals from here on out. Birds with tuck cards, obviously the Chiff Chaff is going to uh, allow us to have five birds in the wetlands with tuck cards. And for round three, we're going to have two ground nests. And of course, by the end of the game, we're hoping to have five birds in the wetlands. So that's usually a traditional weakness of the Chiff Chaff is you're kind of ignoring your bonus cards and your round goals. But we should be able to do fairly well on our round goals and do okay on our bonus card. So I'm thinking about laying eggs here. And I do go for it. Yeah, so we're going to probably get the Chiff Chaff down now on the next activation and then put the Dipper in front of it. Just letting us see as many cards as we can before we are forced to talk under the chip chaff. And we win that wrong goal fairly effectively. There's a nice red start in the tray for my opponent. They may want to grab that falcon for the wrong goal. I believe they have one bird with a tuck card at the moment with the brewer's blackbird. And they did grab it. I'm debating the chiff chaff. Here it comes. And now that's putting pressure on my opponent. They really have to come up with something now to start uh, or to continue keeping pace with my potential point scoring here going into the second half. Just at the in the first part of round two here, we're really establishing a dominating position. So we need more eggs. We need two for our next bird, the Dipper. And it, this is really where it kind of sucks not having an egg-laying bird here because you really got to take, you know, four or five of those weak lay egg actions by the end of the game just to build out your five bird wetlands. So we're kind of feeling that here right now, but. And there's the American Red start from my opponent. So I must have grabbed that as well as the Peregrine Falcon. So there's the Dipper. And my opponent has just got their third bird on the board and not really much of an engine to speak of. So uh, they're, they may be feeling a little bit demoralized here. They're either going to play the Mockingbird for bursting their food production. Nothing too great there. And we're seeing a Blue Throat and a Tree Swallow. And it makes sense to go for the Tree Swallow here. That could be our fifth Wetland Bird. And the Hooded Warbler is probably going to go away here for points but I could theoretically play it into the forest. That would be a six point activation. But I could score six or seven points off my chiff chaff or my wetland engine, depending on what I get down into that fifth slot. So it looks like I'm just tucking one here. 
We've got a little bit of time left before we have to start burning all our cards. And I'm going to deny the blue throat. And I don't think at this point, in this position, playing the blue throat into the wetlands, I've got a food solution through the Phoebe. And I don't really need to generate a lot more food at this point. I just need to have the food covered for whatever my fifth wetland bird is going to be. And right now it's looking like it's going to be that tree swallow. And my opponent gained food. So they're sitting on three wheat there as well. So that could be that sandhill crane coming. No raven yet from them. So we're actually deep into round two, so that would have shown up earlier if they had it. Looks like I'm considering the Baird Sparrow for some extra egg production, but at this point that's uh, kind of not needed. Common Cuckoo and Barn Swallow. Good cards. California Quail, Wilson Snipe, and the Long Spur. I'm probably going to grab the Long Spur here to deny that from my opponent. And if I also somehow manage to get the cards, but I'm tucking it here, so... I was going to say, if I also manage to get the food, I could play it for as a bomb myself, but... At this point, it really is better to just run this Chiff Chaff engine. So now I, I'm looking at the Barn Swallow as my fifth wetland bird and it only costs a single worm and this cuckoo could actually be a um, major benefit here get that down into my grasslands for the cost of just two worms and then i can pick up my extra eggs that i might need although at this point i'm not going to need too many more eggs although the cuckoo does lay eggs on ground nest birds and with the round goal being birds with ground nests with eggs on them, the cuckoo will be able to lay up to four eggs on the chiff chaffs and eggs on the Phoebe as well. So that's pretty good synergy right now. My opponent takes the lay egg action. So now I'm thinking about this cuckoo. I kind of want to get it down as soon as possible to start benefiting from it. Three worms and three wheat in my opponent's food. So I decide to take cards here again. There's a robin, a nuthatch, and a blue heron. Nothing that's really going to help us. Not sure. I think I probably should have played the cuckoo there. I had the food for it. And I could get the second egg I need for my swallow but I would need I, okay I, I think I'm gaining the food here that's why I decided to draw cards I'm gonna gain the food for the swallow here but still if I had played the cuckoo first I had the potential to get that second egg for the swallow so that may have been a misplay there I'm not sure what I was thinking but if I could redo it, I would probably play the cuckoo there. And then draw cards and get the worm for the swallow. And give my opponent the opportunity to take the lay egg action and give me that second egg. Because as it stands now, I'm going to have to take the lay egg action again. So there's a raven and a wood duck in the tray. I think I'm going to deny the raven here. And I go for the wood duck as well. The Raven can still put in work for my opponent, especially since they're struggling a little bit here. And I'm also going to deny that wood, white pack woodpecker, I bet. Well, I'm taking the Clark's Grebe. I can still get the woodpecker off the purple Martin. Well, I decided to let him have it. And I'm going to deny the worm at this point. So I have the food that I need for my cuckoo and swallow. 
win that round goal. Now, I remember this. Alduin's goal pops up in the tray, and I think about it for a moment. I'm throwing down my cuckoo because I want to take advantage of my opponent's lay eggs action here for the second half of the game, but I'm thinking about that Alduin's goal as my fifth wetland bird. And I would have to hand out two more worms or take the gain food action. And I don't want to take the gain food action here. I want to score points and further that gap between me and my opponent. So my reasoning here is, and I'm not really doing any math in my head. I'm wondering about the Alduin's goal. It's, it's a really great tucking card. One of the best cards in the game, quite frankly. But looking at my position... I have the food that I need to get my barn swallow down. I'm probably going to get the second egg I need to get the barn swallow down. I'm just not going to bother to hand out extra worms to my opponent because I just kind of, they have so many food to begin with. So that line of reasoning could be like, well, they already have four worms. It's not going to be that big of a deal. But with this position, with so few birds on the board, and all that food in hand, it looks like they're gearing up to just drop a bunch of bombs. I mean, they could just play bird after bird after bird here. And even though it looks like they have a food surplus, all that food could be accounted for for the cards in their hand. So I'm really deliberating here on whether I actually want to help them get those bombs out here in the second half. So I'm going to wind up playing it safe here. Um, looks like I'm debating on laying eggs, getting my second egg to even get the swallow down versus drawing cards. So I'm wondering to myself whether they're going to take the lay egg action on their next activation and whether I can do something else, but uh, I decide to take that control out of my opponent's hands and just guarantee the eggs I need now because it's possible with all that food and those cards in hand that they could just play birds and they have so many cards in hand as you can see here so I'm not going to take that risk relying on them for the egg I'm just going to guarantee it for myself and there we see my opponent did play a bird and they played that sandhill crane so now they have plenty of wheat to tuck and I am going to go for the barn swallow here. Now, I did talk with my opponent after this game, and they thought that I should have gone for the Alduin's goal, and they thought I would have scored far more points. And I explained to them my reasoning why I didn't, and I said I didn't want to hand them that extra food, but my opponent had the luxury of knowing what was in their hand and how their side of the game was going to pan out. So, you know, they were basing their observation based on what they could see and I couldn't. So I think in this position, you could make the argument that maybe I should have gone for the Alduin's goal. I did go back and do the math, and I believe if my calculations are correct, I would have only scored two extra points with the goal. So I won't spoil the end of the game, but uh, you'll see that coming up, what happens here. So I am going to ignore the Alduin's and just draw off the top of the deck and see what I can see. Uh, the Eastern Bluebird could be good when paired with a late game Benelli's or Eastern Imperial Eagle. Gonna deny the King Rail. Can't play it myself. I think I hold on to the Flicker as well. Oh, I am gonna tuck the Bluebird. Suppose, uh, continuing with, with the line of reasoning that I'm not going to hand out any more food to my opponent. Because the fact that they have so many cards in hand and so much food at their disposal, I don't want to give them even more food to drop a bunch of three, you know, three food cost point bombs. And there we come across the wild turkey. Good bomb, but we're not going to have the food to play it. And there my opponent played another bird and the spotted tohi to combo well with the crane. So this this is where taking that action, that last action I laid eggs uh, to guarantee the eggs I needed to play my barn swallow is really coming into play because they were just playing bird, playing bird. And there they did lay eggs. So we 
picked up that free egg there, and then we're just continuing to do what Chiff Chaff engines do, draw and tuck. Now at this point we're kind of just digging for big eagles. Could it deny the trumpeter swan? And we're holding a card back for the purple martin. And we will deny the food. So things are looking pretty good at this point. My opponent is finally getting a strong grasslands established, but we're coming into the end of round three here. So they're probably not going to be able to race this chiff chaff of mine. And <laughs> Horned Lark comes down. And an interesting note, my this particular opponent of mine is known for uh, their enthusiasm for the Horned Lark. So that's kind of fitting that they played that especially in the face of my chiff chaff where I'm probably not going to play any grasslands bird although you know the big eagles are a potential play here at this point so they may be able to pick up a tuck but I would gladly trade give them that free tuck if I'm dropping a big eagle like that Looks like I'm going to go for the extra card here. I can spend the egg and convert it into a point on the chiff chaff if it ends up being a dud card. And really what that does, it just lets me see one more card in case I do come across that Benelli or Eastern Imperial. Looks like I'm thinking about it fairly hard. And there we see a green horned owl. Not going to play that. And this dipper is really letting us see a lot of extra cards. I'm gonna deny the warbler. And I should go for the fifth tuck here. Although, am I considering the cowbird? Although, I'm not gonna tuck that fifth card. Clicking the back button here. I think I must be reconsidering. I don't know what I'm reconsidering here. Thinking hard about something. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to tuck the fifth card. I mean, there's really no reason not to here. I have the card for. That's the benefit of discarding the egg for the extra card. I can get all the tucks out the chiff chap and still have a card left over for the Martin. Morning Dove pops up. Good early game card. Isn't really going to do much for anyone here. Another free egg off the Cuckoo. It's always welcome. Gets us two birds for the round goal, but we lose this one. Not really a big deal there. It's hard to out-egg a grassland engine with just a Cuckoo. And there's the Peregrine Falcon from earlier, so they're tying us on the wrong goal now. Gonna deny that Pippet. They have a full grassland though, so I don't need to deny the Pippet. Just draw off the top. And no discarded egg. I'm gonna keep the egg because I have enough cards here. Yeah, I'll have the fifth card off the Dipper. And whatever I pick here doesn't really matter. So I did... I should have discarded an egg there. I must have missed that. That was a bit of a misplay. Rough pops up. Not really gonna do much. My opponent has zero cards, so rough won't help them at all. And the rough conflicts with my chiff chaff. So I'm not gonna go for that. There's no reason to deny it either. 
Oh, and the cuckoo does have further incentive to be... I mean, it's been putting in work as far as egg laying goes here for some extra points, but it does get us on the board for Ecologist. So that's a six-point play there. Fairly decent grassland for my opponent, but it was a little too late getting up and running. And we had a fairly effective Chiff Chaff engine come online mid round two. So we had plenty of time to leverage that. Another egg from our cuckoo. Always welcome. And now this time I do remember to discard the egg for the extra card. Yeah, don't need to deny the rough. Carrying Crow and Griffin Vulture. Not the right game for that. No big eagles. Don't need to deny Canada Goose because they have a full grassland. Really doesn't matter here what I grab. Common Nightingale shows up, isn't really going to do much here. It's one of my favorite cards anyway. Chipping Sparrow, another good early game bird. Not going to help anyone here. So we have a seven point Chiff Chaff engine here. Pretty great. The only way this really could have been better is if I had had an egg laying bird to stick in there. Can't complain too much about it though. And we're just going to continue to do what Chiff Chaffs do draw and tuck and pray for big eagles. Take the kill deer for style points. No? I'm going to deny the hermit thrush. Tuck my poor nightingale. Spoonbill pops up. There's only two turns left in the game. I don't know what their food looks like here. But they would have to draw it. And then play it. And they're probably going to want to run their grasslands. They have a pretty good grasslands here. Oh, they're full up on eggs here. Four, five, six, seven, eight point engine. As long as they can lay eggs on the blackbird. So I think I do deny the spoonbill here. I didn't look to see what their food is, so. They've got no food except wheat for their sandhill crane. No flycatcher, doesn't matter. They have zero food here. So they're down to relying on that tohi to gain the wheat for their sandhill crane. And in these closing turns in the game where they have that zero food, those turns that I, that extra turn I could have handed out a worm from the Phoebe could have allowed them to play some type of double bird or something like that. So probably didn't matter, but it could have mattered, so. Our white stork shows up at the end here. Yeah, if I had handed out two more worms to my opponent, they could have used that, leveraged that into a warbler or something like that. We 
tie here. Alright, if you like that Chiff Chaff action, please hit the like button. I'd really appreciate it. And also, if you would, we're so close to 500 subscribers. If you've enjoyed my content, hit the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks so much. So my opponent is pulling ahead here. But we're really hoping to bounce back with our tucks. That's what Chiff Chaffs do. My opponent has a decent amount of tucks themselves. Although at 89, it's not going to be able to pull it off. So 113 to 89. It's a good game to my opponent. And we can see those two points I mentioned from the Ottomans goal wasn't even a factor. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone.